First, we need to install Kiwer. Open up the Google Play Store and search for Kiwer. That's spelled K-I-O-W-A-R-E. So select it and then click on the install. Once it's installed, click on the Android Home button. You'll see a prompt asking for an action. Select Kiwer and make sure to select Always. You may see another prompt asking for a default home. Just select the home app you want. You will only see this prompt if you have more than one home app installed. Now you should see the home screen. We need to open up the Kiwer config tool. So open up the app drawer and find the gray KW icon that says Kiwer config. The first time you open up the Kiwer config tool, you'll be greeted with the end user license agreement. You must read this and accept before proceeding. After agreeing, you'll see the config tool. This is where you'll do all your configuration. Let's start by setting the start page URL. This is the URL that Kiwer will load whenever Kiwer starts. This URL will also be loaded whenever a new user session starts. For example, we can set this to http colon slash slash keyword.com. The next option is start on boot. This checkbox determines if Kiwer will automatically start when the device turns on. We highly recommend enabling this during production. On most devices, you can press and hold the power button until the device turns off. So when the device turns back on, you probably want Kiwer to automatically start. The next setting for basic setup is on the attract slash inactivity tab. Default inactivity timer is used to determine when the user has left the kiosk. By default, this is set to 60 seconds. So 60 seconds after the user has la last touched the screen, the kiosk will end the user session. When the user session ends, Keyword will either load the start page URL or start displaying a track screen. Change this to however long you want Keyword to wait before ending the user session. I just mentioned the track screens. This is a list of web pages you can have Keyword display whenever a user is not present. Think of it as a screensaver. For example, you can have a web page that says, click me. Default attract duration. This is the time between attract screens unless the specific attract screen says otherwise. To add an attract screen, just click the plus image beside attract screens. In the dialog, type in the URL to the attract screen and set the duration to however long you want the attract screen to display. If you set this to zero, it'll use the default attract duration. You can add as many attract screens as you want. The next set of options for basic setup is on the toolbar tab. Here you have the ability to hide or show the action bar. There are a bunch of options here. I recommend just going through the options and choosing what you think is best. To go full screen without the action bar, uncheck enable action bar and check use immersive mode. Note that immersive mode is only available on devices running Android 4.4 and newer. The next section is entirely about security. So let's go to the security tab. The first option is enable device administrator. This lets Kiwi lock the screen and then display on top of the lock screen. We highly recommend using this. Note that if you're using Kiwer in single app mode, or if you're using third-party Android applications, then you will not want to enable this. So to enable, check the box, and you'll be prompted to activate Kiwer's device administrator. Once you activate, it'll prompt you to set a password. If you already have a password, just re-enter the password, and then it'll ask to set a password. So just set it to what you had before. If you don't use Device Administrator, then you'll want to make sure that Enable Device Administrator is unchecked. Then click on Exit Passcode and set that to whatever exit passcode you want to use. The default exit passcode is 3523. We do not recommend leaving that as the default. It may seem secure, but this is public knowledge and has been the exit passcode on our Windows product for over a decade. Next, if you're on Android 4.4 or newer, then you'll want to check Disable Status Bar. This puts an invisible window on top of the status bar and keeps users from swiping down to access the notifications menu. Lastly, if you need to keep users out of accessing different parts of the internet, then I recommend setting up the browsing access list. The list can be set up as an allow list or block list. Some people like to call this a white list or a black list. To set the type of list, simply leave set allow list unchecked to be an allow list or check it to be a block list. The next option is match on. This determines what keyword checks when a page is loading. In most cases, it's safe to trust the entire web page so we can change it to page URLs only. Once that is set up, we can start adding domains to the list. Click on add new domain, 
only type in the domain without a path. For example, you can type in google.com, and that's just g-o-o-g-l-e.com. So when a page loads, if it contains google.com in the domain, it'll get allowed or blocked based on the set allow list checkbox. For more information regarding the browsing access list, you should check out our user guide. Your device is now set up with basic settings. I recommend going through the rest of the config tool and look at different options and decide what you want. For example, we disable zooming by default, but you may want it enabled. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at keyword.com.